Okay, so it's literally like, like three seconds after I just did the outro for the last video. And it's kind of the reason why I'm in the car right now is because I, what I've pulled out of the car, this thing right here, what I pulled out, I don't actually think is the navigation of this car, which is kind of really weird. And this comes from mostly because I've been trying to find a plug to go onto this other one that's in the car that way I can kind of do my own wiring and not be jank about it but as I was finding wiring diagrams for stuff to figure out what, what, uh, what wires go to what I kept seeing references to the navigation unit and navigation unit display separate and seeing wires going into both and I was being really confused about it I mean I guess it was like double stacks so that maybe somewhere like they were just the same thing but they were separated for semantic purposes but as I start looking at the wires, like, for the navigation, there's wires that just don't show up on this plug. Like, there's green and purple, which just aren't here. And finally, I looked at it, and I finally found a place where it actually shows wiring for the head unit display. And that's this. So, somewhere down here, I don't know how you, well you can see because it's dark out. Somewhere down there, I'm guessing, or behind the dash or somewhere, there's actual navigation unit, which is totally separate to what I pulled out. So now I gotta figure out what I want to do. Um, I mean, it doesn't. I guess it doesn't change a whole lot of what I was planning to do because I just wanted to put my own in here. Uh, I guess I was planning to try to interface as much with the car as I could. So I guess I lose that aspect, but I'm not too disappointed in that. Um, based upon the wiring diagram that I have in the the charts I have, there's something called a, I think it's a GA net or whatever. It's and it's how each. Um, thing in the car talks to itself so that's how the radio navigation unit satellite radio and display unit all talk to each other so theoretically i could leverage that if i made a wrapper for that and made on the raspberry which would be kind of a lot of work for not a whole lot of use or payoff but i mean it's a possibility so i could still get some information but that's also banking on that everything is not proprietary i mean the, i looked up the protocol the protocol is not proprietary there is like documentation on it but most aspect about it could still very well be proprietary and I would have no chance of getting anything out of it. So, uh, that's where I'm at right now. So, I'm gonna do some more digging, try to actually find the navigation unit and where it is in the car, and I'll probably go from there. So, yeah. Alright, so I've been looking around for a while, and there's these two boxes here. There's one black one right here you can see. Um, I've just been trying to find the navigation unit and just looking at what could possibly be it. There's a black one there, but it only has two plugs going into it. And based on the wiring diagram, I believe there should be three because there's an A, B, and C listed on the diagram for the like ports and stuff. And there's this, uh, wow, this is like so tight in here. You can see the one there with the lettering behind that wire, kind of obscured by the parking brake. Uh, there's that one there. I don't think that's it. It's right next to the fuse box, and I guess it's more of electrical than it is for navigation units I can't really quite tell but I'm still looking actually I see a little box right there right now which could very well be it there my only, my only assumption here is I'm gonna left side just because wow, looking at this right here the wire goes up and then around back to the left so my assumption is it's gonna be on the left side um, and it very well could be that box down there so I'm gonna keep looking but I just don't know enough about electronics and cars to know exactly what I'm looking for. I just know it's probably going to have three plugs and probably one of them look like those in color. So I shall keep looking. Okay, so I did more research last night and it turns out I was actually correct in that this thing here that sits in that empty space there, this actually isn't the navigation unit. This is just the display for it. So, I finally found wiring diagrams, I've finally found something that shows me where it is, and I was aware of this, but down here, there's this little black box here, and I can get a better angle. So, I knew this is here, because this is where you put the DVDs in to actually, like, update the system, but I didn't realize this was actually the navigation system, is right there under the passenger seat. So... I know where this is, so I guess now I'm going to try and see if I can get to it and, like, what I can do with it. So, good news is, though, I found it. Bad news is, I don't still know what I'm doing. But, uh, yeah. 
All right, so I got this little uh, piece off here. This was covering the front. So you can see it better, a little bit better now. But um, I guess, yeah, this is actually the navigation unit. It looks to be, um, it's not screwed in there very hard. Like there's a screw right at, wow, angles are hard. The bottom screw that you can see, that screw that you can kind of just see right there. That one looks to be what's holding it onto the bottom of the seat. Um, I don't really want to take it out at the moment just because I don't have a need for taking it out. I guess I could see the back connectors. But uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it as is for the moment and kind of just go ahead and see if I can't install the uh, my own screen into there and just see if I can get it there. So I'm probably gonna end this video here. I know it's not really a whole that interesting a video. It's really kind of just me debugging and whatnot, but I guess you can get to see at least the process I'm taking to see how I'm kind of putting everything together and then maybe later on I'll end up taking this out and seeing what connectors I have and seeing, you know, what I have access to. But at least I have a wiring diagram now I can look off of and um, kind of plan things out. But, uh, yeah, so... Alright, so while I was going to edit things, I realized that the video is me kind of short, so I wanted to add a little more. And I'm sorry this is kind of all a little boring. Um, there's not much I can do, this is mostly just me debugging stuff and problem solving so I'm sorry that it's not as interesting I'm trying to make it as interesting as I can but I can only do so much so I apologize for that but um anyways I'm back out in my car right now I'm gonna try and do two things while I'm out here the first is I want to see which of these pins on the this thing here which of those pins there are actually the power I know which one's ground from the data sheet but the the, uh, the data sheet the wiring sheet but the wiring diagram didn't actually have which one was power. It had, I think, like ACC and like B plus, which was the most likely ones. But I don't think it wasn't VCC. Like it wasn't something that I would think would be power. So I'm gonna try and see and check which ones, see which one gives me 12 volts if any of them do. And then next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pull out the uh, nav unit from under there. Um, might as well just because I kind of want to see the plugs behind it and see what it is. So I don't think it'd be too difficult. But um, yeah, so first I'll test the uh, wiring and uh, we'll go from there. So I checked them, they both gave me 14 volts, so that's I guess within reason of a car battery, so maybe they are both power, I, I don't fully know, like I'll, I'll put a diagram up here, the wiring diagram, and I'll show you the, I'll highlight, or up here, I'll, put, I'll highlight the uh, the two uh, ones I'm thinking it's going to be, I, I don't know, they both they both look plausible, they both give me 14 volts, so that, that makes sense for what this is I guess. Um, so yeah, nothing step, I'm going to try and take out the nav there and we'll see what happens. Alright, so I don't know how great that angle was, um, 
but hopefully you're able to tell that. I was able to pull it out, but I wasn't able to pull it out enough to, like, do anything with it. So, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's able to come out without this seat, like, somehow coming out, too. The, the angle that I had to access the, the pins, or not the pins, the plugs, just wasn't great, and I wasn't very confident in my ability to not only detach them, but then reattach them. So I kind of just let it be re-screwed it in. It's actually not that hard to, like, unscrew and, like, dislodge. There's only two two bolts holding it in, so that's not a huge deal. So I can really get to it when I want. It's just more of if I do need to, like, get a plug back there. I don't know how that works yet, so making progress so but at least now i know that this thing here um is just gonna be normal battery 12 volts so i can deal with that just fine and hopefully i can get to actually installing my raspberry into there soon so hopefully the next video will be that again i apologize if this video wasn't all that entertaining not much i can do when i'm just debugging and trying to figure things out but i thought i would at least make this a video and try and at least know where you're at where i'm at and I guess maybe if you guys help out too from me trying to debug stuff, if you guys have any suggestions, feel free to let me know. I guess that's part of partially why I do this, but partially why if you do this, you gotta do this stuff too. If you're interested in this, this is all about the process, so I don't know. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully the next video will be me actually installing Raspberry into there. I'm I want this in so bad. It's just a just a just a gaping hole in my car. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. But uh, until then, peace out. I'll see you next time.